Hey y'all, Soru here. Today I'm going to be going over our strats for O4S. I will be combining video and uh, picture stuff so that everyone knows what to do. As a reference, I will be using the first four slides of the guide that Deli linked us. The guide will be available in the video description below as well as in the raid chat. To start off the fight, we will have the DPS and healer stack on the rear of the boss to bait out the dual cast Blizzard 3 AoEs. After you dodge the first Blizzard 3, you will need to move again to dodge the second one. The original stacking point should be safe for the second dodge if everyone does the first one correctly. Shortly after Blizzard 3, X-Death will cast Thunder 3, which is a tank buster. Since 10 is pulling, we can have him home gang this first tank buster. Shortly after the tank buster, X-Death will cast Fire 3. For this move, the boss will target players for AoE splash damage that will kill people if two explosions overlap. To avoid this, everyone needs to spread. Fire 3 explosions will target the DPS first, and then shortly after target the tanks and healers. After the tanks and healers explode, everyone will need to quickly stack together so that everyone can get topped off for White Hole. If you are not max HP for White Hole, you will get stoned, and everyone will be sad. Following White Hole, the boss will cast Decisive Battle, and this is when the fight will start to become scary. When I replay the clip, pay attention to where the first tentacle spawns. We will stack at the base of where the last tentacle spawns. You can use the first tentacle as a reference to easily find the last one. Notice where the players are stacking relative to the last tentacle. After we get pushed back, we will run in the direction of where the first tentacle spawned. If you are unable to find where we should be running, don't worry, someone will call it out, but it is a useful skill to develop. The reason why we start running in the direction where the first one spawned is because the tentacles will start swiping in the order in which they spawned, and if you get hit by a swipe, you will be flown off the platform and die. The tree will also be facing the direction in which we get pushed back, so running will also help us dodge the breath. If you notice towards the end of the clip, a DPS tank and healer will also get a flare marker. For this, we will refer to our guide. Feel free to take a moment to pause the video so you can understand the picture. So, pretty much, the healers will stay where they are after they dodge the breath, the DPS will keep running along the edge, and the tanks will run back towards where the breath was. The strat will be demonstrated in the following replay. Having Zack and Augur stop after the breaths relieves them of pressure for the incoming flares. After the flares go off, X-Death will spawn on a random player. This is why it is important to be on the edge for flares. Following his appearance, he will immediately cast either Fire 3, Blizzard 3, or Thunder 3. 
This is my least favorite part of the fight, because this is where the randomness begins. <laughs> if he casts Fire 3, untarget the boss, stop casting, and don't move until the Fire debuff goes away. The reason why I say untarget the boss is so you don't accidentally auto the boss during Fire 3. This is the part of the guide where I explain a Thunder 3 and Blizzard 3 if I weren't lazy to get footage. But basically, for Blizzard 3, keep moving until the mech's mechanic to be safe. And for Thunder 3, make sure you are far away from the boss. If the boss spawns near or on you, start moving away from the boss just in case. Following either Fire 3, Blizzard 3, or Thunder 3, X-Death will start casting Vacuum Wave. Once the previous mechanic resolves, run up in front of X-Death and cast either Surecast or Arm's Length so you don't get pushed back. If you do not have either of those moves and do get pushed back, just make sure you get back to the boss quickly. The reason for this is that following Vacuum Wave, the boss will cast White Hole. If for whatever reason you get stoned even though you thought you were topped off, don't worry, this mechanic cheats. Since this video is going for longer than what I thought it would, I'm going to end after I explain the first black hole. I will explain the rest of the fight at a later date. There may not be a video for it though, so if you're looking forward to it, I'm sorry. Either before or after Vacuum Wave, keep a mental note of where X-Death is, because where he is will determine where our North is. Deli will then pull the boss to wherever he would like, and then after some autos, we will look at our next picture. Pretend the Dark Knight in the picture is Deli as a paladin, and the White Mage in the bottom of the picture is Zack as an astro. The DPS don't matter. Remember, the black hole placements are random, so the black holes in the picture may not be representative of what it looks like in the actual fight. Brel was vacuuming in the background, by the way, so sorry about that noise. Okay, I will keep continuing the footage now. In this video, they had the Astro go north instead of south. As you can see, the DPS are wary of the black holes and are spread so that Fire 3s don't clip each other. Another thing to note is after the second Fire 3s go off on the tanks and healers, everyone will stack in the center for share damage. Also, pay close attention to how far away you can be to your black hole's tether. You can't be too close to your tethered black holes, however the stationary ones are pretty lenient with how close you can be. There's a lot of things going on here, so be wary of what's happening around you, don't tunnel too hard, and if you die, try to find out why it happened. Also, if someone dies going into Black Hole, then someone will get hit by two Fire Threes, resulting in a wipe, probably. That's all I have for everyone for now. Uh, I would go further into the fight, but I made this all in one sitting and I'm very tired now. Uh, if you bothered to watch the whole thing, thank you, because I, yeah, I worked hard.